When you break down the mechanics used by Araldus Chapman to throw 102 miles an hour, it's obvious he paid close attention during his physics classes when they were discussing Newton's laws of motion and the advantages of leverage. Now we'll slow him down and freeze some key positions to show where he gains his mechanical advantage. Pitching from the stretch, his rotation is fairly deliberate as he rotates his right leg almost to second base and his shoulder line almost 40 degrees toward first. The hips are sliding forward, his weight is back, and the left knee is flexing. Also note that the spine angle is leaning a bit toward first. Points to note here, his hips are well ahead of his back knee which is flexed almost 90 degrees. His stride leg is straight and well wide of a line from back foot to target. His hip rotation is passing the shoulders as the shoulders stay back. Here his stride foot is still well outside of a line from his back foot to target, so the approach to foot plant is a wide angle, almost 75 or 80 degrees. There are some interesting points here. Unlike most hard throwers, he lands on the toe of his stride foot. Note how he drives his stride foot heel down hard to create a late, quick rotation of his hips. This is a move that golfers have discovered to quickly accelerate the hips and create separation between the hip and shoulder lines. When the stride foot heel strikes the ground, the back knee completes its extension, separating the hip line and shoulder line, creating an X factor near 90 degrees. The evidence is that the belt buckle is pointing almost to the plate, while the right shoulder is still pointing to target. At release, the throwing elbow is extended, maximizing the radius of the arc, and the line between the ball and glove side shoulder is almost straight. The glove is close to the chest, minimizing the radius of the arm. When we get to the follow through, there are several points to note. The throwing shoulder points to the target, the arm is on plane with the release point, the back knee is pointing down and the leg is pointing to the target and close to the front knee. Because of the way he maximizes the potential of his legs and trunk and the long arm acceleration through release and follow through, you can calculate that he is about as efficient and stress-free as any guy can be throwing over 100 miles an hour. Now let's take a look at his mechanics to see if we can see why what he's doing works. Let's assume that Araldus, sitting in his physics class, decided to see if this stuff could help him use his trunk and legs to throw harder. What would he look at first? By comparing different stride leg paths, he found that, for a variety of reasons, the physics supported extending the knee and rotating the foot and leg on a wide arc. Newton's first law of inertia states that a body in motion stays in motion in a straight line unless altered by a force. What I'm trying to show with this graph, which is not to scale, is that the leg swings in an arc, which is the black arrow, the, the direction of the force, the red arrows, is always away from the pivot point. Another of Newton's laws of motion states that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when Araldus goes from here to here, the momentum generated by the quick moving leg approaching from such a wide angle to foot plant produces an equal and opposite reaction away from the pivot. This wide angled approach not only moves the reaction force from the pivot, increasing its leverage to affect spin, it also keeps the hips closed longer. This makes the rotation tighter and faster. On this graph, the green arrow depicts the direction of the reaction force. The closer the arrow is to the pivot, and the more it points away from the pivot, the more it will produce spin. 
Here's where Adultus combines a little exercise physiology with his physics. When his heel strikes the ground, his shoulder line is well behind a line across his hips. This stretches the trunk rotators, loading for a near maximum effort late in the motion. Another point to note coming out of the physics class is that speed is the product of the rate and the distance to accelerate. Adultus loads or closes his shoulders about 40 degrees, and at foot plant, when his shoulder line is to the target, he is already rotating, taking advantage of the momentum developed by his legs and trunk. This allows him to add to what he can produce with his trunk rotators. Now for the back leg. As he flexes the knee to almost 90 degrees and gets his hips well forward, he turns the knee down so that the force of its extension drives straight through the throwing side hip. Very little of the energy created by the backside leg is wasted. When it comes to putting his physics project into practice, Mr. Chapman has done a pretty good job. and I think his grade should come out really close to an A if not an A+. If you want to get a hold of me, try practicebaseballtowin.com. I'd look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.